Welcome to the Church Security Answer Man video blog, where it's all about ministry safety, security, and making a difference for people. And now, your host, a former law enforcement officer, criminal justice trainer, and security expert, Captain Joe Puckett. Well, welcome to this episode of the Church Security Answer Man. This is Season 5, Episode 4, and I'm so happy that you're joining us today. Today, we're talking about when to kick people out of church. And I think it's an important topic. Don't get me wrong right away. I want to say that I am all about people staying in our church. So, and being ministered to and hearing the message and fellowshipping with your people. I'm all about that. But I do believe strongly there is a time where some people should not be in our churches or should not be in our services. So I want to talk about that today and give you my opinion. And it it is. It's my opinions that I'm giving you today. It's not legal advice, and and as I always need to say, the legal issues, you need to talk to your attorney or your insurance company for your church. Make sure that you're following their guidelines for uh, what they want you to do legally and liability-wise. So I'm just giving you some opinions today based on law enforcement experience and church security experience. So So thank you again for joining me today. I'm Joe Puckett. And uh, again, it doesn't matter, as I always mention every week, it doesn't matter what size your ministry is. You could be a home church or a mega church. And it doesn't matter what denomination you are. We're just talking about taking care of our people and our places. So our sponsor today is the Church Security University, their membership site. Lots of great information. If you're trying to put together Uh, policies for your team or your church security plans uh, or you're looking for security assessments or little trainings here and there about verbal communication and other things go to uh, church security university membership.com and you can uh, there's a little bit of information there I am involved in that information over there as well so uh, uh, but go over and take a look the folks uh, with that group have put together some great information for you, and it's very inexpensive to join on a monthly basis. So I encourage you to at least go over and check it out if you need any of that information. So as we jump into this discussion, you know, again, it's a sensitive topic, but I'm all about people being ministered to. I'm all about keeping people in churches. So let's talk about when to kick people out of church. Uh, So I think besides some sort of debate I'm actually after having some pre-planning discussion because here's the issue. The issue is, is that if we don't prepare ahead of time for stuff, in the middle of it, we may not make the right decision. So we want to prepare. Maybe we need to check with our leadership. Maybe you are church leadership or ministry leadership, and you need to sit down and think about what you want at what levels. What do you want your team or your members to do for you? Maybe you need to consult with your attorney or your insurance company, whatever uh, you decide. So our minds do not make up stuff on the go very well. And and that's a very well-known fact. And so, and, and honestly, this is a tough topic because it goes against our grain. You know, we're all about loving people, inviting everyone to come in. And all of that, loving on people, ministering to them. And now all of a sudden we have to make a decision that goes against the grain, goes against our normal beliefs. And also there's going to be people in your congregation that may not agree with this. And I've seen it. I've even seen some people that I'm very close to, uh, get along with great, who when we were beginning to focus on somebody that had some mental health issues, they kind of got upset. And so... Uh, even though I'm very well acquainted with them and we get along great, they still weren't real happy about the fact that we were starting to contain somebody and maybe we weren't going to let them come in and hear the message. So, so I want you to be considering what actions you would take at different levels. And I'm just challenging your mind here. I'm really not telling you what to do. I'm giving you some opinions. And then I want you to investigate it for yourself. I want you to make some decisions. But if we don't talk about it, it's going to be a problem when it comes time to uh, make those decisions. So when are the typical times this might come up with most, uh, you know, and, and it's going to be with most common church events. You're going to have somebody show up and, and you know, and it's, and, and what we're trying to prevent is service interruptions, 
custody issues, you know, and those things are going to happen. And oftentimes this may be where it's related to. You may be great at greeting people at the front door and filtering people out that shouldn't be in your church. Maybe they're having a bad mental health day or there's some anger issues or maybe uh, they just have a no contact or restraining order with somebody in the church and they shouldn't be there. You know, you might be good at filtering that stuff out, but then they might actually get into church and then there's issues. And what's the most common issues that we have? What are the most common issues? You know, we're talking medical emergencies. Let's set that one aside for a moment. And then the next ones are service interruptions and some sort of domestic violence, child custody, restraining order type situation. So, so right near the top three or so might be issues related to this topic that we're talking about where you've got to kick somebody out of the church for the good of individuals within your church or the whole ministry or continuing the service. So that's what we've got to be talking about and thinking about, uh, you know, and again, I think we should always try to minister to someone and I've still got that it built in here. Even if we kick somebody out, I still think that we should be looking at that. So first of all, we can suspect something is not right about a person. Maybe it's a mental health issue. And, you know, we still evaluate them if they should come in or not. And I've had that where uh, just a gentleman not too long ago within the last few months came into the church and right away he's the flags are up. In fact, he ended up telling us during a coffee walk and tour of the building, we get him a cup of coffee. He ended up telling us he, that people label him as schizophrenic. And so uh, uh, we already know something's not right there. But after spending a few minutes with him, we decided, I decided to go ahead and let him go into service and enjoy the service. And it wasn't until later on to where, till he became a problem. After he came out of that service, he was a little louder than other people when he, when he clapped or when he said something. Uh, but, you know, he, he sat through the service and did well. So, you know, when is someone disruptive? That's the kind of stuff we want to be talking about. At what point, you know, is it mental health issues? Is it, uh, you know, is it some, somebody that you can let them go into your TV room or into the auditorium or do we not let them come in at all? And do we ask them to go out front? You know, those are the kind of the options. So their behavior might be argumentative. It might be combative. Uh, it might be just really out of control. And so how are we going to handle each one of those and be prepared for that stuff? So, uh, you know, it, it, and... You know, it's up to our leadership really too to decide what we're going to do here. Or maybe you are the leader. So what are we going to do in those uh, situations? So that gentleman that I led into service, after talking to him, he had apparently had a little bit of mental health issues. We still let him go in. But after the service, in between our two services, he ended up getting a, being very vocal, yelling, screaming, telling me he didn't like me. He didn't think I liked him. He became confrontational, was out in the parking lot yelling. And, uh, and also one other factor was he kept getting in and out of his car. And I didn't know what was in his car. So I finally told him that uh, he needed to leave and he wasn't welcome to come back unless he would calm down. And so I didn't completely tell him he couldn't come back. I told him when you're not going to be yelling and scaring our people and disrupting things, I would love to have you come back. And we eventually called the police uh, not too long after that because, again, his behavior was a bit aggressive. And so and he calmed down and the police showed up. We asked him to leave. He left and we haven't seen him since. So uh, so. You know, at what degree, where, at what point are you going to tell people they have to go? And again, I'm all about letting them stay or like this gentleman, hey, come back. You know, when you can be calm and stuff, we would love to have you come back to our services so and, and spend some time with us. So, so here's my opinion, you know, but again, run this by your leadership or if your leadership, think about this kind of stuff. If someone is being a little weird but not disturbing, Watch them, you know, let them go into your service. You know, they're just being a little bit weird or something's just not quite right about them. And then we're going to watch them. Hopefully you have somebody that can sit near them, watch them, those kind of things. You know, if someone is loud and disturbing your group or service, I think they should be asked to leave. It's going to disrupt what's going on. 
It's going to, your sermon, your music is not going to be the same and meaningful to people, those kind of things, and, and it's disruptive. And I don't think the rest of your folks deserve to have their service interrupted. And that's what many of our disorderly statutes are based on is, is it's okay for us to have activities and not be interrupted. And so uh, I think that's important. Plus, some of our people are not on the same tolerance level as you and I. And some of these actions, even if it's just yelling or something, may scare some of our people, some of those that are sensitive, some of those that are young, elderly, it may scare some of those folks. So we wanna consider that. And, and third, if someone is being really loud and maybe even a bit scary or violent, maybe they're waving their hands around, shaking fists, pointing at you, that kind of thing, I think there is a place for us to also call the police. And, and maybe there's a point where we do say, you can't come back and have a trespass order issued or whatever that looks like for your state or your region. So now don't forget, I'm all about allowing people to come into our service and be administered to. I wanna keep mentioning that because this is kind of a gruff topic, but one we have to face. I think for the good of our ministry, for continuing our services and, and having them not interrupted. So. You know, we can, don't forget, we can also have somebody ministered to out on a bench, out front. Send somebody out to minister to them. We're not letting them in, but we're going to send somebody out front to stand and talk with them and minister to them. You know, there's that option. We can meet somewhere else to minister to them. You know, we can maybe even minister to them by phone or video. I don't know what your options are, but we don't have to just say, you're out of here and then stop ministering to them. We've got m other options, you know, and we could even, let's say they are really disorderly and the police take them to jail. And, and that's probably gonna be a real rare occasion. But I wanna mention that you could even minister to them at jail. Maybe some of you have that chaplain's pass to get into the jail and, uh, or after they get out of jail we can minister to them. We could send them cards while they're in jail, messages, those kind of things. So there are many options that we don't have to, just because we need to remove somebody because they're disruptive or they're out of control, doesn't mean we have to stop ministering to them. We can send somebody to minister to those folks. And I wanna make sure and mention, you know, we don't wanna forget our safety either. So if you're going out to the parking lot to talk to somebody, if you're following them out the door because you've asked them to leave, if you're gonna be minister, ministering to them out front or someone is, I think it's a good idea to have two people there. And don't forget, if it's the opposite gender from you, you wanna have somebody of the same gender that's with you. So if it's a female that you kick out and you're a male, you wanna find a female to go outside with you while you minister to them or while somebody else ministers to them or even if you're just following them out in the parking lot to make sure they don't damage anything. If they're, you're a male and they're a female, you should take a female with you just so you have a witness. And it doesn't have to be somebody who can fight and who's on the security team, I don't think. If you don't foresee a, a violent situation, they're just being loud and stuff, you can maybe grab a greeter, decide what a female greeter and take with you, just a witness, and they can stay back just where they can see you. So you always wanna be safe. We always wanna make sure we're being safe. Take a couple people with us, take the uh, opposite gender with us if that person's the opposite. And the same, if you're a female on the security team and you're asking a male to leave, you're going out in the parking lot watching a male leave, you should take a male with you as well, just so we have that uh, uh, protection there as far as somebody making accusations and, and, and those kind of things. So, uh, uh, so don't forget about that safety. So we wanna make sure safety is very important. Having a witness, just in case something goes wrong, is very important uh, as well. So be safe, but I do challenge you that there is a time for us to ask people to leave. And we need to be prepared for that ahead of time. So I'm trying to start, I'm not telling you exactly when. You know, you have the varying degrees. You have somebody that's disruptive of the service. Maybe they're literally standing up and disrupting the service. They're a little bit louder than everybody else, and maybe they're disrupting in that way. Maybe they're talking loud or laughing loud or clapping too loud for the time that they're actually clapping. 
maybe they're actually outbursting. They're just yelling and screaming their own message. You know, it's these varying degrees. What are we going to do? And I think it's very important for you to get your mind prepared ahead of time. What are you going to do? Because it goes against the grain as us uh, folks are used to inviting everybody in. But also, I think if you're not a leader, you need the leadership's permission or you need an agreement. So it helps us operate better if we know we're in the right path. And, and maybe the leaders, again, want to give you a signal. You know, they want to say, OK, I'll. Uh, tap my ear, touch my ear, my nose if I want you to go ahead and and kick them out, you know. And so and that's OK. Work that kind of stuff out ahead of time. But pre-planning is what makes us most successful. We're always talking about that in here. So uh, in our community discussions here. So pre-plan ahead of time, have a discussion with your team, your team leader, your ministry leaders and have a consensus on this. It'll, it'll be a quick conversation and know when it's okay to kick somebody out and that it's okay to do it. And we can still minister to them, still invite them back once they're calm or where we can go to a safe place and take a couple of us to minister uh, to those folks. It doesn't have to stop today, but we want to protect our ministry. We want to protect our services and certainly our families and our people. That's it for this edition of the Church Security Answer Man. I'm so glad that you joined me, whether you're joining us on uh, audio podcast at one of our many platforms or from our website, churchsecurityanswerman.com, or on YouTube. I'm so happy uh, that you're joining us. So, And if you're on one of those platforms where you can share, you know, give us a share, give us a like. Uh, uh, if you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button so you can get our messages we want to be able to communicate with you on a regular basis. And if you're hitting those buttons, then it boosts our signal to other people. It, it, it gives us the ability to get our signal out to other people, our message. Uh, but it also helps us to communicate with you as soon as we're putting a messages out. So I hope you'll subscribe, like us, uh, even throw a comment. You know, if you've got a comment, I always love to hear uh, what you're thinking as well. So uh, thanks again for joining us, and I hope you have a safe, and secure week. Thanks for watching the Church Security Answer Man video blog. Get more by joining us anytime at churchsecurityanswerman.com.